Hello everyone, welcome to eTech Facebook Live Fridays. I'm Tech Bob, and today we have an exciting one for y'all with the teardown of the iPhone SE 2022. The goal of today's stream is to compare the opening process of the SE 2020 in, uh, to the SE 2022. Also, to compare the parts that are used between the two. It'd be great to know if the screen is the same on the SE 2022 as it is on the 2020, so that's what we're going to do today. To start off, I have the SE2020 version on the left, and I have the 2022 on the right. I've already opened the SE2020. I have some plates removed just to speed up today's process with the comparison. But the SE2022, all I have done so far is open the box up and set up the phone just to avoid the process of going through the Apple ID and all that other stuff. So this is the phone right out of the box. Pretty similar to standard Apple packaging with the thin box, no power adapter anymore. It does come with the cable. So I'm going to take this box and move it to the side. Just packaging, pretty similar to the older phone. Now looking at the device itself, when you look at the front, it is very similar to the SE2020 on the left. A big difference is going to be on the back. So if we flip the phones over, you can see, although they're both the, the darker color versions of the phone, this one has more of a gray black color to it. This one has a slight blue tint to the glass. So that's one thing where the colors are possibly going to be a little bit different. So I have a back glass for the, the iPhone 8 and SC over here. What I'm going to do is just put that over this before we start opening the phone because this one can be compared pretty easily. It's the same size, so this one should work on it. I'm not going to be running it through the laser today, but what we'll most likely do is do a more in-depth kind of video or um, analysis on this and provide info on everything later. But this glass does work on the SC2020 and the iPhone 8, so it looks like it is going to work on the SC2022 as well. So that's the back glass. Now getting into the phone, I'm going to peel off the plastic cover for the first time. I am wearing gloves to try to keep fingerprints down on this new phone. And it arrived, I would say, about an hour ago. So you're seeing it for the first time, as am I. I'm going to let this boot up just to show that it is a working phone. It's wanting a little bit more setup things. But as far as use goes, it's almost identical to the iPhone SE over here on my left. I mean, form factor, very, very close. Which leads us to believe, we posted a blog article about this last week. Our guess is going to be that the screen and the battery are the same part, but we're about to find out 100% for sure now. So what I'm going to do is turn the SE2022 on my right off. And I'm going to start with taking the two Penelope screws out at the bottom. This is very similar to pretty much all iPhones. I'm just looking at the Penelope's, I mean, they're identical to the iPhone SE2022 there on the left. So taking out these two screws, and I'm going to put the device on the heating pad that I have over here to my top right. Just let that warm up a bit. As far as our opening process goes, we always recommend using a little bit of heat as that helps soften up the adhesive as well as some alcohol. So I'll be using a combination of that. I've also become a fan of this suction cup clamp. It just makes it a little bit easier to do with, with one hand versus holding the suction cup, another opening tool. It's similar to the process that the OEMs use as well. It's more suction, less pry tool to prevent damage to the frame or the screen. So I'm gonna let that heat up for a couple seconds. As I mentioned earlier, the goal today is to cover the screen and battery compatibility. I have some other parts pulled as well. That includes the rear camera, the charging port, the Taptic engine, and the home button with functionality. Those are just some other common parts we see replaced. As we know, 90% of repairs are going to be screen and battery. So those are the big ones we want to confirm today. If we run short on time, we most likely won't. We most likely won't um, cover those other parts today, but do it in a uh, future video. So this is still heating up. Looks like it should be about there. Yep, so it's pretty hot there. I'll take the suction clamps. Place them close to the bottom edge. Lift up slightly. I'm actually going to take my SESMO to help get that initial insertion. And once I get there, I'm 
I'm actually going to grab a guitar pick to help with separating the adhesive. Again, the more plastic you use in this process, the better. It prevents scratching the frame and possibly damaging flex cables as well. And as I mentioned earlier, a little bit of alcohol does help here. So I'm gonna feed a little bit onto my guitar pick there, just the seam of the device. Now, I don't know which way this screen opens just yet. I would imagine that it opens the same as the SE 2020, but I'm gonna be careful when opening it just because I have not opened this phone before. Just about there, all right, so. No flex cables on the left hand side and I can see my screen flex cables on the right. So it does open the same way that the iPhone SE 2020 and the iPhone 8 open. A little bit more adhesive here at the top. And there we go. We've got our iPhone SE 2022 open. So just at first glance, the battery does look slightly different compared to the SE 2020 over here on my left. Pop this screen open real quick as well. See, Apple will change the look of how they mark the battery, but size looks very, very similar. So that's going to lead me to believe it is going to be the same battery. Um, as far as other differences that I can see just at first glance, the charging port does have the same color as the back glass versus the SE2020 where it's just a black color. Brackets look the same. So we're going to continue with the rest of the teardown here. I take my Phillips screwdriver and it does use four Phillips screws again to hold that plate down, which is the same as the SE 2020. I'm using a magnet mat up above. You may not be able to see all the screws, but it really helps with putting it back together. have our first bracket or as Apple likes to call them or cowling. I'm going to go ahead and unplug our battery here just to be safe but I do have one more bracket to remove. There's my battery flex and that connector looks very very similar to the iPhone SE 2020, 2020. so that's looks even more like it's going to be the same battery and I'm going to take out this front camera flex bracket here at the top. It looks like these screws are also aluminum to prevent interference with magnetism, so like your cellular antenna. I'm trying to pick that up without using a magnet, so let me see, I have that screw there. And it is all Phillips so far. No tri-point needed yet. I'm gonna do here these clamps are pretty handy when it comes to like holding your screen up. Put that there. And I actually lift my bracket with that screw still in there. Get the bracket off. And then final flex to remove is going to be my front camera flex. So with that, the screen is completely off of the phone. So what I'm going to do real quick is just a OEM swap to see how this functions from right to left, unplug my battery, plug my display cables. All right, so we have SE 2020 screen over here, 2022 on the right, flipping the two. I'm gonna plug my SE 2020 screen. Connector is the same for the camera. Connector is the same for the home button extension and the display cable as well. So we're going to do this at the same time just to see how the cross compatibility works. So I have the SC2022 over there on the right ready to go. I just need to plug this screen into my SC2020. Okay, let's do this at the same time. So SE2022 on the right, SE2020 on the left. I'm gonna hold the power buttons on both. And let's see what we get. 
So that's interesting. The 2022 booted up with the SE 2020 screen. Let me check my cables over here just to make sure it's just not something with the battery. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, so it looks like the SC2022 screen is not working on the SC2020. So that's not going to be compatible backwards, but it looks like the other way it does work. So let's just test some quick things on our SC2022. So front camera, oh, the home button's not going to work because I did not transfer it over. Let's see if cameras work. So that's on the back camera right now. Still on back camera. Front camera is working. So again, this one is working with the SC2020 screen, which is good because that means the new screen should work on our SC2022. I'm gonna check this phone one more time just to check, make sure screen cables are good. Because as we find with most models, typically parts are gonna be backwards compatible, but they're not gonna be forwards compatible with a newer device uh, unless Apple use the same part. So everything is plugged in there again. Let's get one more shot on the SC2020. There it is. So it looks like it was just a cable issue. So we'll let this come back on. And again, our SC2020 right now has the 2022 screen attached. So we'll let that boot up, but that is a good sign so far. What I'm gonna do is turn off this, I'm gonna unplug the battery on the SC2022. I'm gonna actually plug in an aftermarket screen because that's a very important test to do as well. We know typically OEMs are gonna work without issue. It's the aftermarket where sometimes software can control if the screen is going to work or not. So I actually have one of our premium plus screens here that comes with the front camera. I'm gonna plug the front camera flex in, plug my display cables in, it's fully seated there we go boot it up I'm gonna check my cables one more time Okay, so that screen is not coming on. It's interesting. So the SC2022 screen on the SC2020, getting some weird backlight display. You can see how that shows it pretty well. Let's see. Plugging it back into our SC2022. We'll take, oh, there we go. So it did boot. It just took a little bit longer and there's no home button. So I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna turn on assistive touch real quick on this phone. That way I can navigate the phone. Assist. There it is. I came up with a lot of other results there. I was trying to find assistive touch. You can search it from the uh, search up there. There we go, now I can navigate. I'm gonna turn my brightness up. There we go. So now we can see the screen. So it did take a little bit longer to boot up, but it looks like the aftermarket is working on the SE 2022. Uh, touch functionality looks fine. Let's go all over the place. Looks good there. Let's test our front camera now because this is the full assembly version of our part which comes with the front camera and it looks like the front camera is working so this does verify that the iPhone SE 2022 does use the same screen and front camera 
as the iPhone SE 2020 and the iPhone 8, which is great. So that means now you can repair the SE 2020 even though the device launched today. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the screen. This is the aftermarket screen. I'm gonna plug my OEM back into this to see what that rear backlight was. And if the backlight issue is still there, what that tells me is that the SE 2022 screens are more sensitive to heat because it was on the heating pad, I would say for maybe a minute, 60 seconds. And if it caused that backlight ripple to happen that fast, then the danger for that type of repair is gonna be if a customer comes in for a battery only repair, you will want to really manage the amount of heat you use because you don't wanna damage the screen in the process of replacing the battery. So it's booting up real quick and it looks like that backlight issue is still there. So that is most likely from the heat because it was just on the heating pad. So that is very good to know. Again, if you are opening this phone, I don't recommend using heat for too long. This wasn't the alcohol because this does, it, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, that like blotching. That's similar to what you see when you get liquid underneath your display, but the alcohol was only used on the bottom edge, so I don't think it's that. It looks like it's gonna be relative to heat. We're gonna let this screen cool down for a bit. Usually that helps with getting that um, that kind of shadowing to go away, but it's still there across both phones. So it does look like that was most likely caused by the heat in the disassembly. So very important to know, watch your heat when taking the phone apart. If you are doing a screen replacement, there's really no worry there. The only thing I would say, if you are taking a screen off, that does not have a damaged LCD and you want to make sure you keep it intact for buyback reasons. So you have your same buyback amount, you want to use less heat. So as I mentioned before, I think I heated it for about 60 seconds. You want to take that down to maybe half and then go up from there if it needs a little bit more heat because it, it is still showing that discoloration, which unfortunate, but it's good to know here with me tearing it down versus you doing one for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the phone off. And it looks like we're at the 17 minute mark. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the battery next just to compare. This part, both phones side by side. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of our new batteries. And typically with dry fit testing, we're okay to just move the flex out of the way and connect the new battery in. If it does not boot like this, I will have to take the battery out because sometimes that flex that's in the cable doesn't allow you to seat the connector down all the way, which we've seen before on other models as the SE 2020, the iPhone 8 as well, but it does have the same connector as the SE 2020. I'm gonna go ahead and plug our screen in. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the aftermarket again. And if you notice in this video, I am using the spudger to plug in cables a little more than I usually do. I typically use my fingernail, but in wearing these gloves to help protect the phone, it's a little bit harder to plug them in with your fingers. There we go. Last display connector. And again, as you notice, I'm plugging in the battery last to prevent any issues with backlight from occurring. Let's check the connectors on these two, because it does look very close. So try to no, unplug the screen and try to show the camera a little bit closer comparison. So we have both of our battery connectors here. Try to zoom out a little bit focus. We have both of our connectors there and it does look 
like the SC2022 is slightly bigger on the battery connector side. I'm gonna try connecting it one more time. But I don't wanna damage the connector in the process. I'm gonna try plugging it without the screen just to test. Yeah, so the new battery won't connect. The original will. One more time. Right, so it looks like we have it connected there. I'm not gonna plug in my front camera this time. You know what, let me unplug the battery just to be safe again. And this is when testing part compatibility comes into play, You basic, it's a trial and error process. You have to just test different parts until something works or doesn't work, and you wanna avoid damage in the process whenever possible. All right, so we have the battery connected there. Let's see if we get a boot. It looks like nothing on the display. So what I'm gonna say now is that the battery for the SC2022 and the SC2020 are not cross compatible. So this one, we're gonna have to wait a little bit until the batteries come out. It does look very similar in form factor. The battery itself looks like it fits in the same spot. Size wise, almost the same, but the connectors are slightly different as you can see from the comparison here. I can plug that battery in, the original, in easily. But when I try to plug in this replacement battery, which does connect to this SE2020 on the left, it does not connect as it should. So that's important to know. Do not take in a battery replacement for these just yet. And typically, when repairing new devices, we recommend having at least a couple common parts before you jump into it because say you do go trying to do a screen replacement, but the battery ends up being bloated. If you don't have a replacement battery, you're gonna be stuck not being able to fix the phone. So very important to wait until that battery comes out. The screens, as we verified, are the same. That also confirms the front camera. The other parts, I'm going to save for a future stream or for a just a more in-depth video on the teardown of the device. That's going to be, or the back glass we compared as well, it does look like it's gonna be the same. We're gonna run it through the laser just to confirm that the back glass does fit fine, but as far as the back goes, again, just slightly different tone in the color. The Apple logo is still in the center. The rear camera itself is another one I'm going to confirm is the same part. But if you look at the location of the flash, the rear mic, the rear actual rear camera itself, they're all in identical locations. And just looking at the inside of the phones, Taptic Engine looks to be the same size and form factor. The loudspeaker looks the same as well. Again, there's our rear camera, but from the inside, See what else, our antenna cover on this top left is the same. Liquid damage indicators are still in the same spot on both phones. And charging port connectors look very similar. So that would surprise me if the charging port is the same, but the battery is not. But as seen here, the battery is not connecting on this one. So what you have confirmed from today's video is that the screens are the same. The front cameras are the same. The earpiece speaker, I didn't play a video to test it, but typically when the front camera does work, the earpiece speaker is tied to that, so it's gonna work as well. That includes the rest of the functionality too, like auto brightness and the proximity sensor that are on there. The final thing here, oh, and then the back glass is most likely gonna be the same there as well. If you have any questions as far as compatibility goes, drop that comment in our comment section of this video. We'd love to test some future things out. And we were super excited to open this phone up live today. I don't know if you could tell from the opening process, but the phone had literally never been opened before. Um, the good thing is I was able to open it without any issues, so that should be the same for you. If you are familiar with repairing an iPhone SE 2020 or an iPhone 8, very, very similar process. The only thing we're gonna have to wait on so far based on this stream today is going to be our battery as a connector does seem to be different. And if we have any future information about the device later on through the week as we tear it apart, check other things, the logic boards are going to be different, which is one thing that Apple um, quoted in their, their live event. 
it, the iPhone SE 2020 has the same processor as the iPhone 13. I believe it's the A15 Bionic is what they're calling it. So it's definitely a faster phone, but form factor, size, everything else looks identical. And one thing we have been able to confirm as well, because it is the same form factor, it will use the same case as the SE 2020 and the iPhone 8. So hopefully everyone enjoyed today's stream. Try to get in depth as we could in the time we had. And thanks to everyone that is still on the stream today. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching week to week. Again, any future streams or any different content you'd like to see, let us know. But thanks for joining us today. Hope everyone has a great weekend, and we'll see everyone in next week's stream.